G'day everyone, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design and I just wanted to chat to you a bit about these bandsaws. These three have been the foundation of Timbercon's bandsaw range for a long time and I've just never kind of put them all side by side and done a comparison so I thought that would be useful for us to do. They're all called SBS Sherwood Bandsaw. We've got three models, 250, 300 and 350 and that number refers to the distance between the blade and the back spine here, I think that is called the throat. And obviously the smaller one has a 250 mil depth, 300 mil and 350. So there is a corresponding size difference also with the height that they can cut. I think it's roughly 145 millimeters, 170 and 220. But all those specs are really easily laid out on the website if you wanted to check that out. So I'll talk about some of the things that are different between them and then we'll kind of run through a bunch of the features that they all share. Some of the things that differ between the smaller to the larger bandsaw here. I'll start with the fundamentals, the actual work surface, the table. On these two smaller saws, the 10 and the 12, they're actually a cast aluminium, so they're a little bit lighter. There is maybe a tiny bit more flex in them, but still very, very serviceable and useful. On the 14 inch, you've got a true cast iron top. So there's a lot more weight in that, which gives you some stability and potentially reduces vibration, but it's also really a two person lift. Whereas I can move this around a small shop without a problem. So I think that whilst the cast iron top is really core for big machines, there's still a really, there's a place for these aluminium tops as well. Another thing that's different between them is on the two larger saws, you can actually adjust the tension and see that adjustment through this front window. Whereas the uh, tension adjustment on the smaller saw is done uh, with the door open, I believe, and there's not, not a window there. The method with which the tables tilt is slightly different. These two tilt with a trunnion wheel, which is like a geared mechanism. So as you turn that, the table tilts, it's quite controlled. Uh, the smaller one just has a, uh, a bolt knob that you loosen. You can adjust that table wherever you want and you can tighten it up. All three of these machines share the same or very similar fence mechanism which is uh, widely adjustable which is really nice if it ever gets out of true if you knock it put some really heavy material against it you can re true it which is good it has a renew removable auxiliary fence which can be put in a high position or a low position which is nice it gives you a little bit more access closer to the table for a really thin material that you're cutting all three of these machines have a built-in light, which is handy, and I wish my machine had that as well. In fact, I wish all of my machines had that. There's probably a store where I can buy some sort of light that attaches to my machine. I should look into that. The two larger machines have a quick release on the tension adjustment, which makes changing the blade a little bit easier. The smaller one misses out on that feature, but um, that, is, that is pretty handy if you're finding you're gonna have to change blades often. All three machines share a similar door design, which has these uh, quick release cogs or cams. Uh, my large machine has the same system and I think they work great. Another advantage to these doors is they're actually switched. So if the machine's running and you open the door, the machine will turn off. They have a pretty nifty uh, ability to raise and lower this bearing guide, which means you can do those deeper cuts without the bearings getting in the way or bring the bearing right down low to close work. But it's all contained in this uh, double twist knob system. So one of them raises and lowers and then the inside knob here locks that off. They also come with this uh, really cool circle cutting attachment. So I've built a jig to do this, but it's nice to have one built in. Basically what it is, is an arm with an adjustable pin with a sharp point on the end and you can lower this bearing guide onto the work and then you adjust this center point so it is in the center point of your circle that you're trying to cut. You lower that sharp point 
until it's engaging with the timber and that will hold your timber on that spinning central point and you can pass that through the blade. Now all three of them have this. Obviously you want to do it with an appropriate blade for the curve you're trying to cut. So it might be you know, a narrower, narrower blade if it's quite a small radius circle. They all come with a mitre guide, which is handy, and it has points on there, which means you can attach this sub fence directly to it, which I love. Also, they have built in some simple hooks on the body of the machine to slide this into when you're not using it. All three of these models share cast aluminium wheels which have all been balanced, which is a really nice feature. I mean, if, if you've got a lot of vibration coming from these wheels, you're not gonna make really nice clean cuts. So you'll notice that they have little metal clamps on them, and that's part of the balancing process. The machines are well dust ported, and they have capped dust ports, which you can fit onto your extraction system. Um, I mean, that's really key to doing any work on one of these machines because they fill up with dust pretty quickly. The last thing I'll mention, it's a small thing, but I think it's really convenient, is on the back of these machines, there's a little tool caddy that has all of your Allen keys and a little spanner in there, in their own spots, so they're not rattling around and you don't lose them, which I invariably do. Uh, all three of the machines have these on the back. Such a simple feature, but you know, worth mentioning. We have some really comprehensive videos on setting up bandsaws. I know this because I've presented them. You can find a link to them on the screen here or down below. Um, but quickly I'll talk about just the three areas of squaring and accuracy that you need to set up when you're setting up your bandsaw. Your table will come usually not attached to the carriage underneath it. It's attached by four large Allen keys using your Allen key that is attached to the machine. And there's a lot of play in those holes and that's intentional to be able to get it set up perfectly to the blade. So bandsaws naturally have some uh, drift, it's usually called, and that means that even though, though you're running some timber against a fence, the blade might want to wander. And having that adjustment ability in those four bolts connecting the table to the carriage means you can rotate the table just slightly to compensate for that drift and make sure that you're getting really clean straight cuts every time. There's two other places that you want to check for squareness and the machine has the capability to make this pretty easy to adjust. First one we'll talk about is making sure when it's meant to be set for 90, the table is actually set for 90 to the blade and the way that that is set is through this little nut at the back here. The height of that can be adjusted and it can be locked off, which means when you return to 90, it is exactly at 90. The last area we wanna talk about is making sure that the fence is trued to the table. Now, the best way to do that is to pull the fence over to the right-hand side of the blade, bring it up to the edge of your mitre slot, you're gonna use that as a reference and then you can lock it off and you can compare the fence to the edge of that mitre slot. If it needs adjustment, you can use the Allen key provided to loosen these little nuts off inside the carriage here and adjust this fence until it is uh, perfectly parallel to that mitre slot as well. And that'll all help you to get uh, good, clean, repeatable cuts. One thing that's really important when to get your blade saw running at its absolute best is to make sure that the blade is sitting correctly on the wheel. Now, essentially what you want is the teeth themselves to be sitting on the center of that rubber band. Uh, it has a slight camber, which you'll see if you look closely at this rubber wheel here, and having the teeth resting on the highest point of that camber means they're always supported and they can't waver around as much. The way that you get the blade to sit in that position 
is by adjusting the tilt of that wheel. And that can be adjusted through this knob on the back. Generally, you will need to change that tilt positioning when you use different thicknesses of blades, but it's really simple to do. Uh, I would start by turning the machine by hand and adjusting that knob until those teeth are sitting in the center of that camber and then you know that you're good to go. Whenever you're changing blades, you'll also need to make sure you've adjusted your tension to the appropriate tension for that blade. Luckily, these machines have a little guide in here that have specified tensions for a particular width. So you'll see for a 20 mil blade, you want that tension indicator up at the 20 mil, obviously, all the way down to six mil. It's really easy to see. You can see it through the front window, so you can put the blade on and you can make sure that that tension is set with the door closed, even once the machine is running. Whenever you change blades, you're also gonna make, wanna make sure that the little bearings are set in the correct position. Now, you want the bearings either side of the blade to be almost touching, but not quite. Maybe the thickness of a piece of thin paper on either side of the blade into the bearing would be the right amount of space. Uh, and then you want a, the bearing at the back of the blade to again be just barely touching. Ideally, you want these to, when the machine is running and there's no pressure on the blade, not be engaging the bearing, but they'll probably, the bearings will spin as soon as you actually push timber through the blade. And that's how you know you've got them set correctly. You don't want them putting pressure on the blade, you don't want them applying undue friction on the blade or pushing the blade out of the way, deflecting the blade, but you do want them there to support the blade when the blade needs it. And so they need to be really close, but not touching. All of that adjustment is done with Allen keys or with these little knobs here. Again, an in-depth uh, setup bandsaw video is available. So check that out, as I mentioned earlier. But you need to adjust that blade carriage above and below the table to get really optimal cutting results. You can buy multiple blades for your bandsaw and they will all be the same length. But there's a couple other things about the blades that can differ. The first and most obvious thing is the width of the blades. So in my hands here is a six mil blade. It's obviously uh, much, much narrower than what's on the machine, which I believe is about a 12. And I've also got a 19 mil in my hand. So the effect that the width of that blade has on your cut is mainly to do with your ability to cut curves versus cutting really nice straight lines. A narrow blade, like this six mil blade, will cut curves much more effectively and you can cut much tighter curves. Whereas if you're doing big rip cuts or you're wanting to uh, rip a plank straight down the middle, the much wider blade, like this 19, will give you a much straighter cut and a cleaner cut through the timber. So the second thing you need to consider is how many teeth on those blades. In general, because of what they're used for, these wider blades will have less teeth per, usually it's called teeth per inch, even though we live in a metric world. And these finer blades will have more TPI, more teeth per inch. But you can get a fine blade with more or less teeth. And the reason you'd be doing that is generally related to the thickness of the material you're trying to cut. If you have more teeth on the blade, it is gonna be a slightly slower cut, but it will be a slightly cleaner cut, and they're useful for really thin materials that you want to cut a little more cleanly. So that might be if you're cut, trying to cut intricate shapes on some three mil ply or some other thin timber or veneer, then a fine blade like this with lots of teeth per inch will be the way to go. If you still want to do curves, but you're going to cut slightly thicker material, then you could drop the number of teeth per inch, which will mean it's a slightly faster cut, but you'll need it because you're cutting through more material. And the cut might be slightly rougher too, but it's a trade-off. If you're pushing tons of tiny teeth through a thicker chunk of timber, you can accumulate a lot more heat and that can damage the blade and ultimately just result in burning and smoking and not an effective cut. 
Depending on the work you do, you might find that you only use one blade, or maybe you just use two. There's a lot more that can be said about these and ultimately you'll need to probably find the right blade for you in the work that you do. But we have plenty more information about these in the more detailed bandsaw videos that we have on offer. So go and check one of them out. A good bandsaw will be one of the most versatile machines in your shop and you can really achieve so much on them. Now, there's a range here. We even have much larger bandsaws and I think some smaller ones in the range as well. So you're gonna have to choose one that fits the work that you're doing and the size of the shop that you have. So it might not necessarily be that the biggest one is right for you. If you're gonna have to move it around a lot, then the 10 inch might be your, your best bud. For the work I do, I use big chunky timbers and I wanted the ability to cut them. And I had a bit more space than some of you guys might. So I got a really big bandsaw. Choose the machine that's right for you. You can do so much good work on them. I hope you got some information out of this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll have a bunch more videos for you very shortly.